next up, we have a tremendous panel uh, about and, and really three uh, cornerstone leaders of the, the New York digital health ecosystem. We have Bunny Ellerin, who's my colleague at Columbia Business School. She heads up the healthcare and pharmaceutical program there. Uh, Glenn DeVries, who's the, uh, the founder and the co-CEO of Metadata, recently sold to Dassault Systems in France for over $5 billion, uh, another digital health uh, uh, super company. And then we have Doug Teedy, who's the SVP of Life Sciences at New York City EDC. And we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, this today. And again, it's a rapid format, so it's about 20 minutes, but we're gonna talk about the, the state of uh, the New York City digital health ecosystem and what 2021 holds in store for that. And, uh, and what you all heard last week, again, you're all very active at in, in digital health and life sciences and, and love to hear some of what you all heard about the um, from various JPM events and, and meetings last week. But um, let, let's start with Bunny. And uh, if you could, Bunny, just give us a, a, a little bit of background on um, how uh, folks like uh, educational systems are going to work with uh, industry in 2021 to help improve uh, a lot of the a lot of the, the uh, healthcare training and certifications to help people respond and, and transform digitally to their uh, their challenges with the pandemic. Well, thanks for having me, Stan. And uh, I think you're a leader here, right? Because you started the digital health course um, in exec ed for Columbia Business School. But I think more and more we're going to see very specific tailored educational offerings because it's needed, right? Um, there's so much happening uh, in, in the ecosystem. And, you know, we all kind of do our part um, in a sense, maybe not offering, you know, credits, right? Like, or grades, but, you know, a group like ours, uh, New York City Health Business Leaders, we put on a lot of events throughout the year, normally in person, but uh, we've been doing them virtually. And there are many other organizations that do that as well. But the reason is to educate folks in the ecosystem about one, what's going on, two, what to watch for, what trends, three, who people are. Like you just had Jeff Dacus. I mean, you've got Glenn DeVries, who is like the leader in digital. <laughs> so let's all bow. Now I'm embarrassed. I don't too. Oh. You're important too. Um, so yeah, so education will. Um, and by the way, if, do you want to know the so like from the J.P. Morgan or like my short my short lesson is money is flowing. There <laughs> money has it has not stopped, and it and the past two weeks it hasn't stopped. So there's a lot going on. Fantastic, yeah, thanks, Bunny, and and uh, really great to work with you at Columbia as well. And, and Doug, New York City, one of the digital health, one of the life science hubs in the world, certainly in the US as well, Madison Avenue, Wall Street, three top 25 academic institutions, uh, just extraordinary, 8 million uh, vibrant citizens in the city. Tell us a little bit about what New York City does uh, in 2021 to really keep the, um, and how it differs even maybe from other major cities in, in, in digital health investments, life science investments, and how you support that ecosystem. Yep, uh, I'd echo Bunny on uh, on both the praise of this panel and, and Stan, thanks for your leadership in, in pulling this together. So um, from, from New York City and the economic development perspective, I think it's, you know, I, I lead um, both the life science and healthcare efforts. So I think we'd probably look at it from, from three lens, uh, one being life science research and development, probably less relevant for this particular group. Um, and then on the healthcare side, looking at both innovation, and then also getting, getting access to care in the community. I think that's the piece that is super interesting, both from, you know, to Bunny's perspective of the money still flowing. I think perhaps an altruistic uh, hope is that the money starts flowing to those um, who, who need it the most, right? COVID exposed a lot of things this audience knew of getting, getting healthcare to communities in need, uh, regardless of demographics, regardless of race, regardless of income. Is going to be important. What what technologies role in that? I think will be super interesting, and, and it'd be great to see the, the venture community be be back in that, following that, because there are a lot of great ideas there. Um, from the city's perspective, I think we'll continue to invest in. You know, the mayor has, has made it um, publicly known that both uh, public health as well as life sciences is going to be critical to the city's economic recovery. And so, earlier today, we made uh, announcements of um, I think four. Four awards focused on research and development facilities, totaling about 38 million in grants to 
help um, with commercialization of technologies towards company formation. Um, there have been a lot of efforts in and around public health, both at that community level and focused on health equity, as well as uh, we're still very much amidst this pandemic, but helping the city be resilient for the next pandemic. So we just closed a request for information asking the community to help us with different ideas about what should the city be focusing on uh, moving forward. And it's certainly a testament to, you know, this is not just the government by any means. We need all parties involved to, to source some of those ideas, but also make them happen because in a lot of ways that can happen much faster with this community. And that's fantastic. And we'll be talking to uh, Bill Toronto, who's uh, stepping up as chair for the, uh, the Breakthrough Alliance, which is a hit lab New York City EDC collaboration to help accelerate digital health adoption across not just New York City, but around the world. And uh, again, great collaboration with EDC in that as well. Now, really talking about one of the transformational companies that you don't read about in the papers every day, but really the enabler for all of these rapid vaccine trials is uh, Glenn DeVries and, EDC, and, and really the EDC leader meta, metadata located on uh, uh, Hudson Street uh, in, uh, in Soho, right, right out of his office there, that's great. Um, and, uh, you know, again, I think the, um, you know, Glenn, from your perspective, what, what do you see as uh, some of the key learnings from JP Morgan and, and, uh, and how that's going to shape what metadata does in, in furthering some of the, the new vaccine research for, you know, COVID-21, COVID-25, whatever's coming down the pipeline next? Yeah, well, and, and, and really, uh, I think just research and, and life sciences in general. Um, so first, let me say it. Uh, it's an honor to be part of the the, the Stan Doug Buddy Show. Like this, this, I feel like I'm an amazing company. So it's a nice way to start the year. Um, I, I actually, I, I think if you look at what's happening, yeah, the money is flowing um, for sure. What will be interesting, and um, uh, I think Doug, you made this point. There's a point in the middle too. It's like where is it going to flow? Where there's merit for it to flow to, and um, how much hype cycle is going to be uh, surrounding some of that easily accessible cash. Um, so I do think that we'll probably uh, live through another pretty significant hype cycle, uh, over promising, you know, this is this is the miracle AI technology, the data source that changes everything. Um, but if we've learned anything, it's, um, it, it's that a lot of these sometimes crazy ideas are, are probably going to have tremendous merit. And I think what we what we saw with COVID-19 uh, is that there's a real opportunity to, to measure a merit in a way, uh, hopefully that disappropriately brings value to communities that need it more. Um, but I, I think that's really gonna be the future. Um, I, I think about um, life sciences and, and to your point, Stan, nobody really knows who it is because um, you shouldn't need to. You should be waiting for the new vaccine. You should be waiting for the cure for your rare, rare disease and the companies that help enable that to get to you uh, are yeah, part of that equation, but it's the it's the tr the um, treatment that you're working on. But those treatments are what define healthcare's ability to execute. Um, what defines our ability to get healthcare to communities who are waiting for it. Um, you know, I actually find it spectacular that the whole world is talking about manufacturing and logistics, um, because actually, when you're thinking about creating a new life sciences therapeutic, it has no value until you figure out how to get it to communities that that don't have it and or that are waiting for it. And so uh, I think that there's a real opportunity to, to marry this money with merit and figure out how we light up the people who are waiting for therapies with, with what they need. Um, again, whether it's something that is a blockbuster, remember when everybody said there were no more blockbusters? Well, I guess they didn't count on a pandemic. Whether it's a blockbuster uh, molecule that's a vaccine or again, a, a, a small, um, population of rare disease, I think we're going to be at a time where people have figured out there's more innovative ways to, to attack that problem and that we can measure the outcomes with real patient data. And that's exciting. It'll be worth living through the hype cycle for that. Yeah, agreed. And that's great. Yeah. And uh, go ahead, Bunny. Yeah. Can I, yeah, can I jump in on, on what uh, you both said in terms of money flowing to um, real real needs in the community. So, you know, before the end of the year, you probably saw that City Block Health got $160 million um, in funding, and they are addressing many of those needs. I think you're right that we need more of that. Um, but 
what I'm seeing, you know, we do this annual report, which will come out in about a month on New York innovation and what's been going on. And at least what I'm seeing is that there are, even in the early stage venture um, capital environment, the partners are actually talking about this and talking about funding and looking maybe to even start and fund. Um, but, you know, we need funding to go to a wide variety of people. And I would, the other thing I would say is that over the past year, um, many leaders in New York in the um, health community and the health equity community have really stood up and talked about this need. Um, Gail Addo from Rubicon has started a telehealth initiative. Uh, Mount Sinai is doing this really interesting program. Air NYC is doing it. Those are just three examples. So um, I do think we as New Yorkers can be a leader in this um, and looking at new models that integrate care, et cetera. Yeah, I, so I, you go ahead, Doug. Yeah, I just doubled down on that. I mean, I know this the the audience is well beyond New York City, and and you've got three or four of us here who are, are uh, focused on that. But I think Bunny's right in the sense of even for those who aren't in the digital health community, I think seeing that's one of the interesting parts about New York: seeing different people from other industries step up and be interested in this. That cross pollination. Uh, of ideas and know-how and and getting things done. I think that's, we're going to see more of that, not just in New York, but elsewhere to, to solve some of these issues. Whether that's finance or actually the implementation, uh, that's going to be something to watch. And Glenn, you're, you're a, a leader, not just in New York City, but also with Carnegie Mellon, your alma mater uh, on the board there. Uh, so you're, you're, you're very familiar with how to create linkages and, and uh, not across just life sciences, but globally, uh, life sciences and healthcare. Uh, what are some of the, the keys to 2021 for us to get to some of these answers faster uh, and, and how to improve these collaborations? Yeah, well, I, I, again, I'm going to riff off what, what Doug was saying. You know, I, I think it, you, have to, you have to make the rubber meet the road with some of the connectivity of people and businesses. And it's actually why, to Bunny's point, like New York is a great place to be. And I know we have an international audience and I work very, you know, internationally. Um, but it's nice when everybody's like across the street from each other and can bump into each other. And remember when we used to have coffee and drinks, like actually do that kind of thing. It, it makes a difference from an execution perspective. What we've learned in the past year is as much as we thought that was valuable, it's certainly not necessary um, to create real relationships and partnerships and innovate. Um, and we've also realized that we probably had big blinders on in terms of what delivery of healthcare should look like and that it would required putting two people, the, the treater and the treatee, the doctor and the patient or the nurse practitioner and the patient in the same room. It's just not true. And so if we can, if we can get that like mix, this kind of what I think businesses, educators all need to be doing, what actually I think everybody, you, the three of you guys have all been doing quite admirably is figuring out how in this kind of environment we can get that mix of people, but really actually attach it to a, a real world outcome. Um, that, that's kind of how I think about what, what's going on. Um, uh, I, I feel like the pendulum has swung hugely into, into us all just getting on Zooms and talking about uh, ideas, but not actually having the time maybe or, or funding and different business to implement them. Um, we've also seen some people with giant ideas and giant funding um, have to close their doors after a couple of years of not delivering mm -hmm. everything. So let's remember that money and ideas um, don't equal health. Um, but if we can swing that pendulum now, having seen that a little bit in the other direction, maybe we can come out in a nice place, um, inclusive of New York and everywhere in the world. If that makes sense. Yeah, that's great. And I think, you know, part of, we've got about five minutes left for the panel. Uh, and, and then what we'd like to do to kind of summarize, maybe starting with Bunny, we'd like to talk a little bit more about where, where this goes and where the investments go over the next, you know, one to two years based on what we're seeing for JP Morgan, but also the five-year horizon where that's going investments into virtual uh, whether it's clinical trials or other things, and then investments into education, like what we're seeing in, in you know, again, within Columbia Business School with, uh, you know, the, the healthcare and pharmaceutical program, the digital health program. Uh, and, and Bunny, lead us off there on the academic yeah. side and, and where you see this heading. Well, first, I, I couldn't agree with you more, Glenn, um, in terms of just because somebody gets $130 million this week, um, it doesn't mean that they have the best solution. It just means that a bunch of people are betting on that for various reasons. So um, bet on people who know healthcare. Anyhow, um, I think on the education front, I'm, 
I, I'm actually going to talk more about the healthcare front. Um, mental health um, is a topic that you know we um, that is pervasive, right? Like 2020 COVID um, racial injustice. I mean, it just blew the lid open, right, on mental health and mental health issues um, have been inching towards public um, notoriety for a while, but 2020 really hit it. So you're going to, you've already seen a bunch more investment, you know, company of companies in the mental health space, but all over, whether it's addiction or very serious psychiatric issues um, to, you know, depression, et cetera. Uh, I definitely think you're going to see a lot more of that. And you are going to see more um, hybrid tools, right? Not just a telehealth solution, but rather, to be honest, like digital and telehealth is sort of like table stakes now, right? It's it's just it's like what digital was, you know, 15 years ago. It's part. It is. It's just part of it, right? So, it's the delivery mechanism. So you'll definitely see more solutions that you know, where it's digital first, but there's still gonna be a lot of services involved. That's why like we call things tech enabled services because even though you don't have to be in the same room with a doctor or a nurse practitioner, they do have, they not have knowledge that we don't have, right? And that's why we rely on them. And so, you know, you'll continue to see more and it probably verticals, you know, musculoskeletal is a big vertical, um, you know, uh, cardiology, uh, you'll probably see more in oncology. So those are some of my thoughts. Fantastic. Uh, thank you, Bonnie. And, and Doug, what, what are your thoughts in terms of future investments in, in, in this area? So, I mean, I think a lot of your other panelists, uh, including this, this group, are, are better attuned to that. I mean, I think some themes that have come up already, mental health, telehealth, um, certainly that, that's not going away. To Glenn's point earlier, not specific on those, I think it's where do you Kind of cut through the noise uh, on that and make sure it's good solutions getting to good folks and, and then having the right people and right teams to actually implement some of those um i i still stand by you know where can work in the dollars and implementation follow by follow into the communities that need it most right um and bunny gave a great example of a new york city based you know city block is that's one right but we'll, we'll need more of that and that you know, that there need to be be those in, in other communities, not just urban areas. And then Glenn, you can probably touch much more on this just given metadata and, and your expertise. But I think um, clinical trials, we've still got a long way to go in that, both from the pharma biotech perspective, but also going back to that community piece. So what's the right way to do that? So it makes sense from a business as well as getting care to those who, who need it most. Um, not many have been able to figure that out, but I think that's something certainly to watch and, and there's interest from many parties yeah. on that equation as well. I, I think that, that that one to two year time frame, people are, are starting to figure out what to do with that table stakes digital infrastructure. Um, actually, I think it was with uh, Stan last year. There was this, uh, we were talking about this thing in nature medicine. Um, if you look at nature medicine access, you can see these maps that show how far people are from hospitals around the world if they need to take a car or walk and people are far. Like you forget how spoiled you are when you can walk to the best academic medical center, you know, in the world. Um, and that's a problem that needs to be solved in that five year time frame. The people who learn how to leverage that digital infrastructure, because if you look at the map of the world, everybody is on top of that digital network. Now, I don't care what part of the world you are in. If there are people, there's connectivity and the people who figure out how to do research in that early time frame to make the tools in the end of that five-year time frame allow you to provide healthcare more broadly. That's the investments that are going to pan out, I think, the best. Um, and so I'm, I'm excited about that kind of digital perspective on leveraging that as a piece of a therapeutic. That's fantastic. Thank you very much, Bunny, Glenn, uh, Doug. Thank you all uh, for your time today. And uh, looking forward to seeing you face to face, hopefully yes. sooner than later. You guys, for drinks in New York soon. <laughs> Absolutely. On Glenn, all on Glenn. On me, always, Bunny. <laughs> <laughs>